On today's episode of What's Going On with Shipping, Russia has instituted a ban on the export of diesel fuel. I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano. Welcome to today's episode. So we're very familiar with energy bans coming out of Russia. We've seen uh, price caps being put on Russian crude oil. Then we saw it put on Russian diesel fuel. But now we're seeing a ban on export of diesel fuel from Russia being imposed by Russia. And the question is, what is that going to do to the global energy market? We're coming into fall and winter. This is just when we'll see diesel want to spike. And now all of a sudden, we're going to see a disruption in the flow of that diesel fuel. What does that mean globally? What does it mean locally? What does it mean for the Russia-Ukraine war? That's what we're going to talk about. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, so here's the story by Greg Miller over at Freight Waves. How will Russian ban on diesel exports impact the global energy trade? Product tankers shipping rates could take hit from surprise move. And then this piece right here, Russian diesel exports ban is risky for Moscow and world alike from Bloomberg. Uh, within the northern hemisphere, winter approaching, global diesel markets already tight. Russia has banned export of the fuel that's used for transportation, heating, industrial processes. Many analysts expect the halt to be temporary, but others see it as another example of Moscow weaponizing energy exports as its invasion of Ukraine enters a 20th month. So this is the traditional flow of Russian diesel here. This is a map by Scorpio Tankers. The solid blue line shows you where Russian diesel trades typically flow. And that's out of the Black Sea and out of the Baltic. Now, B Baltic and Black Sea, very shallow oceans, not very big. And so you tend to get very smaller tankers coming out of there. And that diesel is flowing out of the Baltic to Northern Europe or out of the Black Sea into the Mediterranean, going to North Africa, going to Southern Europe or going to Northern Europe. So basically very short distances for that diesel fuel. But with the institution of the price cap coming into effect now, one of the things that we've seen is Russian diesel is going a lot further. So that dash line, that potential changes to Russian diesel flow you're seeing there. You're seeing that diesel flow go lots of places. So, for example, out of the Baltic in those small little tankers, we're seeing arrivals off the coast of Spain. And we're seeing big ship to ship transfers where you're consolidating those loans. Uh, loads, excuse me. Out of the Black Sea, very similarly, you see smaller tankers coming out, consolidating loads off of Greece. And then that oil then is heading to new places, heading to Brazil, it's heading to the Middle East, it's heading to India, and it's heading up to China. And so diesel is flowing all these different places. Now, the problem is that there is now not diesel going into Europe. And that has created these new flows. If you look at the yellow lines or gold lines here, this new flow of diesel, you're seeing diesel coming out of the United States, heading over to Europe. You see diesel coming out of the Middle East, out of Turkey, out of India, and even out of China. Yes, there's diesel flowing into China, but there's also uh, crude oil. Large amounts of crude oil are coming into China. That's being bought by the Chinese Russian oil, it's being refined, and the excess of that is being shipped out and actually sold back to Europe. So in many cases, Europeans are getting Russian oil. It's just been refined and sent to them. And this is creating the disruption that we've been talking about. And what you see here is really the creation of two networks that are delivering oil. You have what is sometimes referred to as the dark fleet. This is that group of ships that are involved in the movement of Russian oil, especially now that Russian oil and Russian diesel have gone above the price caps. Again, the way the G7 and the European Union have tried to limit the shipment of Russian crude oil and Russian diesel is by instituting a price cap, which basically says that if you are a shipping company and you have to get insurance for the cargo, the cargo company, the insurance company, excuse me, will not give insurance if it's over the price cap. And there are like 13 large P&I companies that operate this. And so the G7 and the EU has put pressure on them. Well, much like if you get in trouble and you can't get car insurance from the traditional places, the Russians are going other places. We're seeing the creation of new shipping companies in other places. And then those shipping companies are getting insurance from other places. And so the UAE, Singapore, out in Asia, in, in South Asia, in Africa, in the Middle East, they are standing up these companies. And we're seeing two rival fleets begin to emerge. The ghost fleet, the shadow fleet, the, whatever you want to call it, has ranged anywhere from 400 to 600 ships in its operation. And they're moving cargo around. Now, what this has done 
is literally shifted the ability of oil to move. So those short distances of Russian diesel are now going much longer distances. And that has increased costs of transportation. And so when you had those sanctions kick up on February 5th, Russian diesel no longer went that short haul route to EU. Instead, it was going to Brazil and Turkey and Africa, the Middle East and the Far East. And U.S. diesel that was going to Brazil, for example, shifted over to Europe. Do you remember why there was a diesel shortage up in the New York City area? That's because diesel that went up to that area was being sold over to Europe because it was more profitable to be sold. There wasn't a shortage of diesel in the New York area. It's because the oil companies decided it was much better to sell, uh, sell that oil overseas and make a bigger profit about it. So what does this manifest itself as? Well, let's take a look at this chart here and you see right here that Russian clean exports have and clean exports, we're talking about uh, diesel here, clean products. You'll see how in 2021, the exports have basically really kind of flatlined between 1.4 and 1.8 million barrels per day. But then in 2022, it dropped down. This was the implementation right around February 5th of 2022. You saw this drop here. You can see it begin to drop. And then all of a sudden, it kind of took back off and matter of fact, spiked here at the very end of 2022 and into 2023. And then it kind of plateaued down and is stabilized roughly where it has been. And a lot of this oil, again, is tra traveling over to those new areas. If you look at EU clean products import, where is the EU getting it? Well, here you can see that they're consuming about over 2.8 million barrels per day starting in 2021. It peaks up at about 3.4 million barrels in 2021. And then when you get to 2022, it spikes up even further, over 3.8 million barrels per day. And then you can see it fluctuating here up and down. So the EU has had to import more and more of its diesel fuel. This chart shows you the Russian product exports, its total, and the percentage that went to the EU. And this only goes up to March of 2023, but notice Russian product exports running between 1.5, 2 million barrels per day. You see it precipitately fall here till it's basically zero going to the EU, but their product exports are actually increasing. Actually, the highest they had been is right when that is. And that's because they're going to those new marketplaces. And where is that going? Well, here's a chart from Bloomberg that kind of shows it for you. Prior to the war, prior to February of 2022, it's the 27 countries of the EU and the UK that was the largest recipients of Russian diesel fuel. They were sucking it in on huge measures, either by ship, by pipeline, you name it. And even the other members of Europe were getting a large part. And then a very small percentage went to Africa, very little to Asia, and then, you know, a, a kind of a mix where everything else went. Then you hit February of 23, and February 23 is when the the export go, uh, goes in, the export ban goes into effect, and the price cap goes into effect. So in February of 2023, you're not getting Russian diesel anymore going into Europe. You're not getting Russian diesel that can be shipped on vessels under the G7 EU agreement unless it's under $100 per barrel. But Russian diesel is now over $100 per barrel. And you see where it goes. All of a sudden, Africa takes off the blue line here. You can see Asia increasing its share. You can see the Middle East, South America, largely Brazil, getting it, and then others. But notice the flow, how much is coming out. It's remained pretty steady, right around 1 million barrels per day. And all that means is that when Russia turns off the spigot, as it just did, now all of a sudden that oil, uh, diesel, excuse me, is not going to Brazil. It's not being loaded in those ship-to-ship -ship transfers off of Spain, off of Greece, and then being sent long distances to India, to China, to Africa and the Middle East, which means now that that diesel that was going there is going to have to be replaced by other diesel. We know OPEC has cut back on oil exports. Now, what oil is being refined and turned to diesel is going to have to be consumed so that diesel that was coming out of the Middle East, that was coming out of Turkey, that was coming out of India, that was coming out of China is going to have to be repurposed over to there. And more importantly, Brazil, which was getting a lot of that, that uh, Russian, excuse me, it was initially getting that Russian uh, 
diesel now we're going to have to return back to getting u.s diesel and that is trying to squeeze the europeans i'm really convinced that this effort here while it's going to cost money for the russians is an effort to squeeze the europeans as winter is about to approach and if you look at what's happening in the u.s just for terms of diesel this is the eia report this is their week in petroleum and you can see what is happening with diesel prices right here in the u.s Orange line is 2022, 2021-22. Blue is 22-23. Look at how U.S. diesel prices are on the rise. These are going to spike now if this diesel export ban from Russia goes into effect because it's going to be more profitable to ship Russian di uh, U.S. diesel in place of Russian diesel. If you come down here to U.S. distillate stocks, how much, how many millions of barrels of diesel you will have? You see, we're already low on the spectrum. This gray shade here is the five-year range, usually where we're sitting here with diesel stocks. And while this is distillate stocks, most of this distillate is diesel. But notice we're on the very low end of that. So that's going to have a big impact here on diesel fuel and if you look at u.s diesel fuel productions where we're at right now we're on a little bit of a downturn we've been holding roughly around five million barrels per day went down at the uh, beginning of this year and has slowly begun to climb back up and now what we're seeing here is that move and if you look at demand what happens with demand notice here how in october there's all of a sudden that huge spike this is last year's demand it begins to go up and then if you follow that demand here, you can see where it goes into the winter time. And now we're already seeing that demand being up a lot higher and it's about to take that upward swing. So what does all this mean? Well, obviously other countries are gonna be buying our, our diesel, Brazil in particular will need to buy it. Uh, what does this mean? Well, in short distance hauling, usually you have something called a medium range tanker. Medium range tankers are these tankers that are designed to haul shorter distances. They're designed for that. And so MR tankers are great for the short distance hauling. And that's something that we've been seeing doing. We've seen MR tankers hauling diesel out of Russia to those ship to ship uh, ship to sh ship anchorages and doing the consolidation but now the long-range tankers these are the bigger tankers bigger tankers are more efficient uh, they're, they're better designed to carry fuel over long distance to carry more are going to be in greater demand because now all of a sudden there's going to be a need to haul diesel into europe in large measures you know a lot of crude oil was going out of russia into into uh, uh, Turkey were being refined in the diesel and then shipped those short distances. But now there's going to be a global shortage of diesel because a lot of the Russian diesel is now going to dry up and which means there's going to be a big competition to move diesel in other places, Middle East, Asia, Africa, the United States, South America. This is going to have a big impact. What does this mean for you? I expect to see diesel prices start to climb quite quickly. Uh, you'll see issues about diesel shortages or diesel uh, uh, shortfalls start to crop up as oil uh, companies want to send their diesel for more economical reasons overseas. Distances. Uh, not exactly sure what's going to happen with shipping rates here because two things are going to happen here. The ships involved in the dark fleet are going to shift back over to the, to, to the traditional hauling of cargo. And so you're going to see a surge of ships into the traditional shipping lanes. That could depress freight rates. So you may see the freight rates of companies go down. At the same time, if you're hauling less commodities over longer distances, that's going to have an, a, a push on the freight rates too and could push them back up. So not exactly sure where freight rates fall out on this. I think it's going to be really interesting, the companies that have the different fleets, the MR, LR fleets, how they fall out here. But what I do know is this is a big move by Russia. I am not sure how long they can do this for until it hurts their economy to the point of damage for money-wise. You also have the issue of storage capacity. How long can Russia store diesel fuel in their, in their tanks? Uh, this goes then to production capacity. You can't just turn off oil wells. You've got to keep that oil coming out and you've got to refine it. When you refine it, you get diesel fuel. So what are you doing with it? So this is a big play by Russia right now as winter is looming on the horizon. 
I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? Well, first off, give it a thumbs up, but also you can hit that super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon where you can become a monthly or yearly subscriber. As a patron, you'll get early access to some videos as they come out. Uh, I will be taking requests from my Patreon viewers for suggested topics in our weekly What the Ship, and I just love my patrons because they allow me to do a lot of what I can to make videos like this and bring you information about shipping. Until our next video, this is Sal signing off.